Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? I thought another good practice. I think our guys are competing. That's the that's kind of the biggest thing I take away from it. You know, we went outside for the early part of practice, get some of that heat. Thought our guys pushed through that. That was difficult. Um, and I thought it really picked up as we came back inside, got some good teamwork in. Dennis Allen, after day six of Saints training camp, our correspondent, Maddie Hudak, was there. She's here now. Always appreciate it, Maddie. How are you? I'm good. Uh, it's an easy day out there with only half of it being outdoors. So, <laughs> I would imagine. So does do you notice uh, the energy level uh, uptick as well when the guys get out of the heat? Oh, without question. I mean, I can tell the media's energy levels kind of perk up. The only downside of being inside is we're kind of siphoned off to one corner. But I've noticed, too, the turf in there just seems faster when Tulane would practice there. The guys always seem to be running just a little faster than I would remember, but it does get relatively competitive quickly in the AC. Um, when you start to look at some of the camp battles now that we're just about a week into into Saints training camp, this is day six, they're in the full pads for the second day. What are the camp battles that seem to be elevating, that are sort of rising to the forefront? Well, you have that cornerback battle going on with Elante Taylor and Paulson Adebo, and I noticed again today that they're still really not playing their usual nickel defense, and so we really haven't seen them try out anyone in that slot role. So it's hard for me to say kind of if, if that battle is still continuing or if they're planning to move one of them to the slot. But uh, as much as we talked about kind of the tight end group yesterday and whether or not you know Jimmy Graham still kind of has the same spot that Juwan Johnson would have, it was interesting because a lot of the tight ends suddenly kind of popped up today and certainly made a conversation of, what that roster group is going to look like. I've also been really curious, actually, you know, who's kind of the running back room projection because mm. we're still kind of waiting. You know, I know Alvin Kamara is planning to talk to Roger Goodell or hopes to in some notion, but to think that he won't be suspended at all is just kind of you know, a little overly optimistic for me. So that's something I'm really looking at too, as well as kind of that wide receiver room and who kind of filled that out. Um, with uh, You mentioned the tight ends. It, it seemed like there was a little bit uh, today as I was kind of scrolling Twitter. What what happened today that, that stood out for the tight ends? Yeah, everyone's kind of calling it tight end Tuesday. It's just they were kind of the first option today. We saw a little bit of um, an opportunity for the quarterbacks to audible today, both Derek Carr and Jake Hainer, and it was interesting that the, the check down options kind of to that tight end group and, and several of them at that, and there were sets where they'd have Taysom Hill out there with another pass-catching tight end, and it stuck out to a lot of us that it actually kind of gives the Saints several credible receiving options now because you can't ignore Taysom Hill off the line of scrimmage. You know that he can catch, but it gives guys like Lucas Bowl an opportunity to get open and not really rely on just Michael Thomas being out there as a primary threat. But it was interesting with all the attention we've seen them kind of go to the wide receivers the last couple of weeks. Again, interesting after a conversation yesterday that it was just basically the first option was tight end all day, but you saw quickly how that can start to kind of get those short games actually sustain drives and get some first downs, which is something the Saints really struggled with on offense last season. You know, it's, um, Matty Hudak is our guest, Saints Camp Report. I was thinking about this earlier, Matty, I'd love your perspective. If if they do keep four tight ends, right, if we spell it out, it's Johnson, Morrow, Graham, and then Taysom. I mean, if you earmark Taysom as a tight end or however you want to label him. And if they do keep the third quarterback in Jake Hayner, where's the spot on the roster Maddie, were they were they cut? Were they they're maybe a little thin if they have to carry or if they choose to carry a fourth tight end and a third quarterback? It's really interesting to me because Jake Hayner has kind of played his way into the conversation, at least to kind of see how he does during the preseason. But his command of the offense and just his ability to kind of make those decisions and, and be in control of the offense as is, it stands out to a lot of people. And so it's something that is worth mentioning, but I've been thinking about that third quarterback quite a bit just because they do have Taysom Hill. I'm actually kind of curious if he presents somewhat of a, a rule problem with that third quarterback, uh, if he were to actually kind of go in as that third quarterback option. But I, I think what we might see them do is just get creative with the designation for some of these guys like Taysom Hill. Because you don't really have to call him a tight end. I'm not really sure what he's going to be doing on the offense. But to me, that's kind of where you can get away with one of those guys. But you might see them carry more tight ends and perhaps wide receivers and that's something that is a lot different than last year's offense if you think of Jameis Winston and the strength that he had on offense 
versus Derek Carr, who seems to really be comfortable with the tight end group. So if they're able to kind of get some chemistry and connection going there, I could see them kind of carrying less uh, wide receivers, mm. barring any abilities on special teams. So, so not to to miss the point, but like essentially, you could look at Jimmy Graham maybe not necessarily as a tight end per se, but more as a pass catcher, and that would be that extra receiver spot. Are you talking about Jimmy or Taysom? Well, I guess Jimmy, but I guess it could be Taysom either, but we know Taysom's going to run the ball, right? I'm just thinking in terms of pass catchers instead of designated wide receivers. Uh, yeah, because I, you kind of forget about Foster Moreau too, um, which, again, is is a good problem to have that there's almost too many tight ends to remember at this point. But, yeah, I think Jimmy Graham really offers that. We have seen him block a, a little bit as well, but all of the tight ends have really been used as receiver options mm-hmm. the last couple of days, which – Interesting, but again, I think the preseason will really illuminate that once you see them actually lining up against another opposing team and seeing what they do against different defenses. The only thing I keep saying about seeing those three linebacker sets out there is there's not that many defenses I could think of that primarily trot out those three linebacker sets all the time anymore. So I'll be curious to see how that kind of third receiver fares against perhaps you know more of a secondary heavy coverage so I, I don't want to belabor the point um but I'm just I'm really curious your thought because you're out there seeing this every day and you obviously follow this so closely but what I, my assumption is that Foster Morrow Jawan Johnson Taysom Hill they are locks they are a hundred percent making the team yes you yeah okay I'd moment back. so of, so Jimmy Graham and so that's why I brought up Jimmy Maddie because there's one guy that I would look and go all right, where's the like? How do you make that work? It's Jimmy Graham, but if he plays well enough to make the team, you got to find a spot for him. So that's kind of why I that's why I alluded to to Jimmy in in the in the way that I did. No, it makes sense. And again, I'll just I'll keep going back to his stature because you know Jawan Johnson he's still six four. I'd be curious to actually see what the wingspan is. I have half a mind to go back to his you know combine scores at this point, but you can just tell he had another physical catch today that elicited some you know, trippiness, which is always good to see, but. It, it's clear that he has just a little step above everyone else, quite literally by his stature alone, and I, I think that that's hard to ignore on the roster. Let's see, I'm looking at, uh, let's see, Juwan Johnson. I'm not seeing reach here, but it shows his uh, arm was 34 and a quarter inches, hand 10 and a half, 6'4", 230. Um, I don't see. I, I know Jimmy played basketball for yeah. a while. Right, right. So the wingspan is there. <laughs> right. No, he's definitely big enough there. All right, Matty Hudak's with us on Twitter at Matty Hudak underscore ninety four, giving us our Saints camp report. Uh, one more for you on the offensive side. Uh, Michael Thomas, I know, did meet with the media today after practice. Anything of note uh, from Michael, either what he said or what you saw today? Well, yeah, I'm, I have to keep running back home to uh, deal with some doctor's appointments, but it just just stuck out that it doesn't seem like he was hurt at all, and it seems like he's back to his form when you were kind of seeing him take almost those baby steps just in minicamp a few weeks ago. So it's hard to ignore. I think the motivator that a guy like Derek Carr brings, you can really see just kind of that inspiration, I think, on both of their parts and just the amount of time they've already talked about one another. And you could see them just going again, you know, to one another off to the side after almost every play. And it just kind of seems like Michael Thomas is almost falling back in love with football. And when you're out, for that many seasons in a row and really had a connection with someone like Drew Brees, I could see how you kind of get to that mental rut, but it's been a really, really strong showing from him every day. and He just looks confident out there and, like I said, really as healthy as you could expect. Any update on Andrews, Pete? He wasn't out there today. And okay. That's pretty much all we offered. Everyone else, though, full attendance. Are we uh, are we on the Blake group uh, hype train yet, or, or is Will Lutz outpacing him? I mean, listen, it's been competitive enough every single day. I don't remember his exact numbers today, but he was making them from relatively deep out there. Um, I, I Like I've said, even if he doesn't necessarily turn this into a full kinky competition, I think you've seen Will Lutz kind of see the fact that his job is not you know necessarily fully yeah. there for him at this point. And so if, if it gets Will Lutz to work a little harder, but it's just so impressive to watch Blake Krupe because it's just at his size. To have the power behind his kicks that he does, yes, we were inside today, but and you know, it wins not the hugest factor outside here either at this point in the season. So it's been competitive. Lou Headley, again, has a really strong hang time as well. So I'd love to see some special camp battles. And I think that's really what you see in the preseason, too. Uh, she is Maddie Hudak. We got football on Thursday. How about that? We got we have preseason football on oh, Thursday, whoa. the Hall of Fame game. And, and, uh, and Kellen Mond is going to start for Cleveland <laughs> in the Hall of Fame game. I'm Beautiful. I, I, 
<laughs> I shouldn't be as excited about that as I am, but but I am just to watch football on Thursday. All right, Maddie, you're the best. Thanks. We appreciate it. Thanks. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.